Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Naomi Simpley, um, as Julie just mentioned. This is my first ever webinar, so you're going to have to bear with me. Um, what I'm going to do is just talk through a number of things that have helped me. Um, and as you can see, one word can change the world with 140 characters, as Jack Dorsey says. Um, oops, hold on a sec. What are we going on? What's going on? Okay, I'm going to tell you about why I love Twitter. Um, I started using Twitter about three, four years ago. Um, I used to run a national events company called Baby Loves Disco, uh, which was a concept that I bought over from America. Um, we had very little marketing budget. And what we did is we promoted the events um, via word of mouth, um, social media, and PR. And social media worked very effectively for us. Um, combined with the PR, we uh, moved into nine cities across the country in a very short space of time. Um, I liked engaging with people. Um, I will say that if you're going to go onto Twitter or if you are on Twitter, there's no point in you being on there if you're just talking about yourself. But that's something that we'll cover in a minute. Um, so for me, it's, it's always been really good. I've met loads of amazing people. Um, I I run two companies now. I'm not running the events company anymore. Um, I run a so very small social media consultancy called Social Media Boom, and I work with organizations, um, teeny tiny ones and big ones, on how to use um, social media effectively for their business. And I also um, am co-founder co and director of Enterprise Lab, uh, which is an enterprise employability company, which I started with two guys that I met on Twitter. Um, which is, you're probably thinking, oh geez, that's a bit mad, but um, yes, it, it was at the time, and um, I had a lot in common with uh, Sabian and Kitan, who were partners, and we um, were engaging on Twitter, realized that we had um, a lot of um, like-minded interests, and realized there was a gap in the market, and um, we decided to set up Enterprise Lab. Uh, which has been running since November 2011. And that all started from a conversation that I was having somebody, with somebody that Sabian busted into, um, and then Katan joined into the conversation. Uh, and that's the great thing about um, Twitter in particular. Um, obviously, you've got Facebook, you've got Pinterest, and you've got LinkedIn. Uh, the reason that I love it so much is that you have to think about, you have to think smart about your words. And also, you can literally talk to anybody. Uh, so we're going to cover a couple of different things um, first. Um, I'm taking it that um, you are all on Twitter or you're using Twitter already. One of the, my bugbears is seeing what you can see on my screen, which is one of these, which is an egg. If you're going to set up on Twitter, uh, there's a couple of things, rules of thumb. This is obviously a commitment. Um, please, please put a profile picture in, um, and please make sure you put your bio in, because otherwise, if somebody, if somebody, say for example, somebody follows me and they are an egg, I don't know who they are for a start, and if they haven't got a bio, I 110% won't follow them because I, I, again, I don't know what they're doing, what they're about, where they're from. So. I don't know whether any of you read yesterday, but um, Hillary Clinton joined Twitter yesterday. And I thought, as this is quite current, it would be quite bi a good bio to have a look at. So, so basically, in your bio, you need to, whether you're an individual or a freelancer, um, it might be as the company, it might be as the social enterprise, it could be many other things. Um, I have lots of different accounts. I have my own personal account, which I'll show you my bio in a minute. I also have um, Enterprise Lab, and um, I have a couple of other accounts that I look at. But that's the first thing I, I, I thought out is the bio. So as you can see, Hillary Clinton here is a wife, mum, lawyer, women and kids advocate. Um, I can't see a couple of the words because it's got the webinar control panel on. But I can see floor floater, senator. Secretary of State, author, dog owner, hair icon, uh, pantsuit affiliate, and glass ceiling cracker. Now, that pretty much says what she does. 
Um, you know, obviously you've got thing in there that she was a senator, she's been a secretary of state, she's a, you know, first thing is she's a wife, a mom and a lawyer, which is her original um, career. And, you know, she's also put a bit of fun in there as well. Now, whether to do that on a business one is, is, is questionable because really it, you have to be very professional when it's a business one. So I'm going to come out of this PowerPoint thing. Um, I'm not a big fan of PowerPoint, by the way. And we're going to have a look at my Twitter account. So this is my own personal Twitter account. We're going to have a look at my um, Twitter bio so you can see who I am. So director at, of at Enterprise Lab. So if, if, you, if you do have a personal account and you have a business account, make sure that you give a shout out to the business account. Um, we're a Smarter 100 business, a director of social media, boom, Dragon's Den survivor, I'm an IOE e mentor, a speaker, social media trainer, and mum. So I've got on a in a slightly different order to um, Hillary. But I think that pretty much says what I do. Now, if we have a click on the Enterprise Lab one, which is just going to open up, this one is a more business-focused one. So it's, it says on here, oh, there's a lovely picture of Adam Bradford down there. Let's wave we'll, we'll at Adam. Um, we create enterprise opportunities, real-life experiences, and problem-solving scenarios that empower young people to create opportunities for themselves. It's basically what it says on a can of baked beans. So you have to really think about what your profile says. Have a look at the, you know, at the end of the session um, today, and obviously you can bring it up in questions later. Have a look at what your bio says, and does it really say what it says about you, or what it should say about you? Because that's the first thing that people do when they, when they start, you know, when you're looking at people who follow. And I'll, again, I'll give you another example. Have a look at who's followed me today. So we just go on here. Okay, so I've got a company, an organization here called Satsuma. They've got a picture of a, a Satsuma. Brand new mobile phone accessories company. We sell a well, wide variety of accessories such as screen protectors, cases, and cartridges. Let's just see where they're based. I, have, I don't, can't see where they're based. I don't know whether they're American or whether they're in the UK. So at the moment, I'm not going to follow them. Um, Unitel.com. Again, they're... They've got a little logo, which is great. Communication special, uh, system specialists would provide cost-effective integrated technologies, networks, services to businesses of all sizes. Let's just see where they are. Blackburn. Okay, I'm going to follow them because they're up near me. Um, I've already followed a couple of these ones here. Um, follow for news and events in Stockport and Spain. So I brought to you by the lovely people at Mumsnet. Um, I'm not sure whether the, I know what Mumsnet is because I'm a mum and I've worked in that market, but whether that sort of says exactly what Mumsnet is, I don't know. So what probably I would have done if this was me and it was my account, I would have had follow news and events in Stockton and Tameside, brought to you by the lovely people, and then used the Twitter name for at Mumsnet. Obviously appropriate one. Um, downtown Liverpool, a business club with attitude, uh, the Liverpool section, that obviously says what it says on the can. I have followed them this morning. Uh, exposure, calm, clever people in events, PR, and social media. I had a little look at them this morning, and I'm going to follow them. Um, Mr. Eric T. Tung is apparently a number one network influence at Forbes, a social man uh, manager for BMC Software, social consultant at Chasselblas, co-founder uh, of SM Ledger, two degrees from Kevin Bacon, own source. Well, he. He does quite a few things. He does more things than I do, so I think he might be quite interesting. So I'm going to follow him. So do you get my gist about the um, the bio? I'm going to show, see if I can show you some some bad examples. This one here. We don't know what Shami Bahudu does, or we don't know what he does. Uh, let's see if it says where he's from Hatfield, Hertfordshire, and I know that he's got a website called Let's Go Green UK dot com. What I don't know why is why he hasn't put an explanation about what he does. Um, let's see if we can find any eggs. Oh, there's another one here who again hasn't put in their um, description. So fireless, I don't know what they do. I think it says a little bit in here in their lo in their logo. It says sprinkler something, but that's all we know about them. Um, oh, here's an egg. Okay, so. Creative Girl UK, 
Fizz is a creative bunny with passion for fashion, music, charity, sports, travel, aspiring entrepreneur, looking for fashion biz mentor and funding, live, love and laugh. Um, she sounds quite interesting, but she hasn't got a, a, a picture. So I always think people are not going to take it seriously if they can't be bothered to upload a picture. It's really, really easy. You can do it on your phone, you can do it on your laptop. There's no excuse. So let's move on. I think I've said enough about bios and eggs. So obviously you need to think about um, a strategy of sorts. So I use a really fantastic guide. and I'm going to send this link um, to Julie Nicholson, she can pass it on to you, called the Smarter Guide to Twitter. So if you are new, it's a really good guide to have a look at. Even if, you, even if you've been using it for a couple of years and you might not be using it effectively. Um, basically it's saying on, on this image here, what is Twitter and how does it work? Well, obviously up in the top left hand corner we've got Twitter is the most up to date source of information and news on the internet. It lets you search for words or issues you're interested in to see what people all across the world are talking about in real time. It's not about selling, and I can't stress that enough. If you're going on to Twitter, you can't just go on there and become a double glazing salesman and just shout, shout, shout. And again, we'll look at that, uh, some examples of that in, in a moment. Um, Twitter basically asks what's happening and helps you uh, the answer spread across the globe immediately. It's about communication. Um, talking to new people, finding things out and sharing information. Um, your tweets and your profile page can be seen by everyone, whether they're on Twitter or not. And you can make them private, but that's not really in the spirit of things. You can send private message, messages to individuals. So if you are on Twitter and you have one of those locked accounts, I don't understand why you're really on. Um, again, it's, but that's just my own personal opinion. You know, I, I do think if you want to send private messages to people, you can do it in other forms, and you can obviously send private messages on Twitter. Uh, your tweets can also include uh, links to websites or web pages and pictures, and you can address tweets to someone else on Twitter, obviously. Uh, it's really easy to use and completely free, and that's one of the reasons why I like it. Um, I'm not a big fan of Facebook anymore, purely because they make a lot of money out of us. Um, if you want to grow an audience on um, Facebook organically, um, you can try. Um, but to try and get lots of likes, as everyone is after likes, um, you know, most people do Facebook advertising, which can be costly. And even if you have built up an audience on um, Facebook, Facebook then charges you to spread the word to your audience. So your message only goes out to a percentage of, of your audience. Um, if you wanted to go out to everybody, you've got to pay some money. So that's why I'm not a big fan. But Facebook can be very good as well, so be careful what I say there. Um, you have a profile page where other people can see uh, all your most recent tweets, a small picture of your one-line bio about your links to website. Uh, you share updates up to, of up to 140 characters, obviously, called tweets. And again, you've got to think really smart about the characters that you use. Anyone can follow you. Um, you don't need to be approved, which is why many people like Twitter. It's democratic and very open. Um, the best way to get a feel for how Twitter works is to look at a few people who are using it. Uh, you don't need to create a profile to do this. Um, you can just be nosy. Um, I'm actually quite a nosy person, so I love it. Uh, you follow other people, businesses or organizations you're interested in, which means you receive their tweets, i.e. their updates. You get a list of all those, those people's tweets so you can see what they're all saying. Okay, so that's basically what Twitter is and how does it work. Um, one thing that you have to um, do is, is listen. Um, like I said, it's not all just about... Um, you talking, 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 talking. You have to listen to what other people are doing. So if we're talking about a business, um, I, I always say that you have to be quite strategic about the, the people that you follow. So think about, um, and you know, you can use this in your own sort of personal um, views as well, but if you think about your business, you want to think about um, the competition, uh, what are the competition doing on Twitter, which are having the most success and why. Um, think about your customers, current, um, past, and um, people that you would like to be your customers, so people that like 
uh, already talking about um, either the products or services that you use in your area. Think about um, following industry peers and industry related press. Um, follow people that you know. Um, again, on a business one, I'm talking on a business level rather than a personal level. Uh, it might not be wise to follow um, your friend who constantly posts pictures that are inappropriate on a business account or someone who effs and jeffs every five minutes. That probably wouldn't look very good. Um, it's a, a lot of, you know, I think social media as well, and I think especially Twitter because it's so out there, it's all about um, credibility. So I was, I've come across people that say that they are social media experts, and I don't profess to be a social media expert myself. Um, but what I will say is you can always tell people that, that um, say that they do something and they don't really do it. So just to give an example, and I'm, I'm not going to show any examples in this case because I don't want to sort of home in and pick on anyone. Um, but if you had someone who said that they were really good at something, um, so say for example, we're talking about social media, so you have someone who says they are a social media expert. And when you have a look at their Twitter feed, which is what I do, I do this for, for everybody. Again, when I decide to follow somebody, I'll look at their Twitter feed see if they're actually tweeting, see if they're actually following people. It, um, so if we're talking about the social media trainers, um, if I see somebody who literally is just regurgitating information from Mashable or any other sources, does not engage with anyone, they don't really know what they're talking about because actually being using social media is all about the art of engagement, especially Twitter. Um, loads of fantastic um, opportunities um, to be able to to talk to people, um, you know, with um, a like-minded people if you use it properly. So think about setting up a strategy. I can I can send um, information um, later on, and we can talk about this in the questions and answers session. Um, a little bit more information about that, but sort of think, go through a list of the sort of people that you should be following. Because actually, for you to get followers, you have to follow people. It's as simple as that. If you want to do it organically, yes, some people buy people. There's no no point in you even doing buying followers because actually they're probably going to be fake accounts or they're going to be people that you have nothing in common with. You have to spend time doing it what I, I would say organically. That's the best way to do it. And again, you know, if, if it's a business, think about having a look at the competition, seeing how well or seeing how badly that they do it. Um, this is just the lingo here. I'm sure most of you know the lingo, so I'm not really going to go into great detail about it. Um, but just a couple of the things here that are worth having a look at is um, hashtags, which is trending topics. Um, also, you can highlight specific words with a hashtag um, and I'll give you examples of that in a sec. Um, um, most of you have probably heard of a Follow Friday which is hashtag FF. Um, I get a bean in my bonnet about Friday follows. Um, I do them properly. If you're going to recommend somebody, it's like me recommending a builder to you. I want to give them a reason. I'm not just going to send you a big long list of people you should be following. Because actually, when you're recommending your followers to follow certain people, you're sort of saying, oh, actually, these people are okay. But if they turn out that they're not okay, it can come back and bite you on the bum. So if you're going to do a Friday follow, um, and I've got a link to a blog post I did this, uh, did about this um, on SM Experts. Um, if you're going to do a Friday follow, please give people a reason. So, for example, if we're going to do a Friday follow this Friday for Unlimited, give people a reason to follow them. So just tell people how fabulous they are and how they support social entrepreneurs. Okay? Lists. We've also got lists on there. Um, I personally, even though I've got a really big audience um, and I'm following a lot of people, I don't use that many lists. But for some people, they find lists very simple to, very, make, it makes their sort of Twitter experience um, easier to manage. Um, person, I think if you rely on lists and you just look at those lists, you miss out on gems. So that's debatable about whether you want to use them or not. So obviously we've talked about profiles, so we're going to skip past this. Um, a couple of things here, um, and this is 
great actually because I've got to know quite a few of the people that have given advice on this smarter guide. Um, you've obviously got your social chit chat where you describe what you're doing throughout the day, share news and updates um, of a more personal nature. When I say personal nature, if it's personal account, yes, but on a business account, it would be the day to day, what's going on at work. Now. When you're, when you, when I'm, you know, that's they've obviously smart have said that. When I'm talking about social chit chat within a business environment, um, it's things like this. So um, this morning I did a tweet to a friend of mine called um, Sandy Lindsay, who runs a PR uh, company, and she did a tweet this morning saying, "Best foot forward, fab piece in PR uh, UK Newsweek, announcing that Tangerine PR's appointment to Motor Shoes." And I said to her, you have me at shows. That's the sort of social chit chat I'm thinking about. And by the way, hi, Abdul. I don't know why I'm waving because you can't see me, but I've just seen you tweet. Um, another example of a, um, a businessy one, or, or, or actually, no, not a businessy one, a social one. Um, Tim Fuel, great guy, well worth a follow. He's the director of Jibber Jabber Pods. He's a blogger for 123 Veg. He's a journalist, lawyer, media man. This guy just does everything. Uh, and he's fabulous. He sent me a link uh, because he knows, um, probably more so because of the Baby Loves Disco link. Um, I thought this would make you smile. And it was um, a company called My First Rock Band, who, funny enough, sent me a tweet this morning to say thank you for retweeting. It was a, a tribute to Daft Punk's uh, Get Lucky, which was a link. That's the sort of social chit chat I'm talking about. Okay, sharing information, ideas, resources, tools, websites, news, etc. The information you share share can be uh, some of your own material uh, and some that you have found. Uh, make sure you um, also retweet other people's information, but only when appropriate. Um, so there's no point in I get again I get a bee in my bonnet. Um, I've got uh, there was a, a guy who was a personal trainer who used to follow me, I say used to, um, he literally, all he did on Twitter was retweet other people's tweets. He did no original tweets, and he would retweet things like me tweeting back somebody saying, saying okay, or whatever. So, you know, that's not appropriate. If you're going to retweet someone's information, make, some, make sure it's something that's juicy. So again, thinking about your audience, um, if we go to um, the home page, so let's see what Unlimited have talked about today. Um, okay, and what I will say as well is make sure that you have a look at links before you share it. So um, here, Unlimited have done a tweet this morning about the social apprentice idea. So first thing you're going to do, you've got to open the link and actually read the damn thing. Don't just tweet something um, without reading it. So this is uh, the social apprentice. The apprentice television show a battle, battle between contestants with Flair and Ackerman, but these role models represent in the British business and the current wave of innovation that's sweeping across the business world. At Social Enterprise UK, we think not. Okay. I can get a vague idea about what this says, um, and I like what I'm reading. So I'm actually going to retweet that to my followers because I think my followers would find that interesting. And I'm also going to favorite it as well because I might have a look at that later. Okay, let's go back to the smarter thing. So uh, that's about retweets. Think about um, one of the things I do for one of my um, clients is I check um, the newspapers every morning and every afternoon. So have a think about, again, what is appropriate to your audience. Um, so if we think about, let's have a look what the Telegraph business uh, section is talking about today. Um, Let's have a quick look and see if there's anything that's going to be appropriate to my audience on here. This is a really easy way of sharing information. Um, oh, look at this. All this is. Okay, hold on. Home sales hit three year high. Yeah, hi, that's cool. Small firms oppose U E U X set. Um, does anyone understand what these Bitcoin things are, by the way? Because I don't. Keep reading about them. Uh, nationwide cut interest rates in the mother diabetes and shoppers ditch cards. Oh, active venture pays up uh, for hospital cuts and a cat. Okay, I like cats, but I'm not going to tweet that story. Um, 
Okay. James Kahn to be to win and be ready to lose. Did any of you read the story? And I know that you can't I can't speak to you, which is is a problem because I would like to be speaking to you, but I can't. Uh, did you read the the, um, the the story about um, James Kahn last week? Uh, he's now the the government's uh, social mobility star, and um, he made a comment last week about um, his daughter. Uh, no, he made a comment last week about how it was bad to give your kids jobs, despite the fact that he'd given his daughter Hannah Khan three jobs. Uh, but anyway, this story here, I read this the other day and I thought it was quite interesting. Um, to succeed, you have to be ready to lose. James Khan started out as a teenage entrepreneur. I work with a lot of uh, teenage entrepreneurs. This story has got a um, piece of my heart already. Um, selling leather jackets to his school friends that his father had made. Um, so this is basically an interview with James Kahn, and it's, uh, as you can see in here, how did your childhood influence your, your work ethic and attitude towards money? Um, I think that's going to be a good article for, for me to share to my audience. So literally, all I'm doing is just pressing Twitter. If I want to add a comment, I can do, um, but I'm just literally, just because we have sort of time pressures, I'm literally just going to press tweet and I'm going to share that to my audience. Okay. Again, thinking about this in, on a business side, if you have business blogs on your website, so to give you another example, um, the Business Growth Hub have some great blogs on their website, which is appropriate to businesses in the Northwest and nationally, actually. Um, we click on blog. And I'm giving, pretending that this would be, say, one of you guys' business websites. So you obviously want to share information about your business as well. So um, some of the information that you're sharing, and you can do this in a very non-salesy way, is sharing um, information on maybe perhaps a, a, a business blog. It might be that you're sharing um, information about, if, as you can see here, I'm clicking on using expert help. Um, it could be anything, um, but if we just go for, to blog, think about trying to get people to come to your website. So this is a really good good way of doing it here. So I'm going to have a look at this one here, uh, which is about Tuna Fish Media, who are uh, an organization um, that are based at an amazing facility up in Manchester called The Shark Project. Um, so this, um, I can literally just press Twitter, and I can share, if I could see it, and I could move this thing. Oh, I can move it down there. I'm going to tweet that. Actually, what I should have done is put in a comment. So I'm telling you to do all these things. I haven't even put a comment in that. I didn't realize that it just said business growth up. But hey-ho. Um, so think about almost coming across as a guru of what you do. Um, so again, if we're going back to that whole credibility thing, if you say that you're um, a, let's, let's use a different analogy, say for example you're the best butcher in the Northwest, give people a reason to think that's true. So you are sharing information, ideas, resources, tools, websites, news, etc. about your chosen field. The information you can share it can be some of your own material, it can also be uh, from some that you found. Make sure to retweet, like I said, other people's information. This is really important. If you hear something that you think is of interest to others, then retweet it. Knowledge and expertise. By answering questions, you'll become known as the go-to person on a particular pod, uh, topic or great resource. This is your chance to really shine. So this, however, will take time, by, but investing in building your brand will benefit you in the long term. So um, when we're talking about knowledge and expertise, um, people, um, talking about me for example, I get asked a lot of things about social media um, and I also get asked things about youth enterprise and employability. So people will actively come and ask me questions about the things that they know that I like to talk about and that I'm passionate about and that I share information about and that I have a lot of knowledge about. When we, um, when Enterprise Lab started in uh, November 2011, uh, before it started, we spent the first six months making sure that we knew everything 
about everything to do with youth enterprise and employability in the UK. And when we set up the Twitter account for Enterprise Lab, uh, we did the same thing. So we made sure that we followed um, everybody, the who's who, including Adam Bradford. I hope you are listening, Adam Bradford. If you are, uh, I'm sorry. Um, but so Adam, for example, is a great example of saying exactly what he does. So if we go to, um, let's just find him on here a sec. Where is Adam gone? Okay, there he is. Okay, so Adam is a young entrepreneur creating social change via Live Unlimited, um, Unite Computing, uh, and he's an entrepreneur expert for VM uh, Pioneers and Dragon Jones to Ambassadors, all views of my own. Um, I've had the pleasure of meeting Adam quite a few times. He's a great guy and he knows what he's talking about. If you have a look, uh, if you think the, the bit I was saying about doing the strategic following, because, for example, we have an interest in enterprise employability, Adam, for example, because I know that that's something that he does, I would be looking at who he's following and who his followers are. It's almost like you have to sort of put on a detective hat and um, think about um, who, who other people would be following, because, again, you, you don't know... You can do searches uh, on Twitter, and there's lots of different other things that you can use, like Twello, which is like the yellow pages of Twitter, and find out who is on. Um, but it's always, I think, a great, um, great thing to do is to have a look at who who's other other people are following, because they're most likely. If I look at Adams, uh, who's he's following? I'm more than likely to see people that I should be following. Um, so again, that's sort of things that, that you guys should be doing. Um, this takes time. It's not um, to build up the audience. You know, I've got quite a big audience, and that's taken me years to build up. Um, it's not all about numbers. Um, one thing I will say is, um, you know, it's all well and good having a gazillion followers, but actually, if you're not going to get engaged with them, what's the point? Um, they have to also be quality. Um, like I said, some people, and I came across somebody, um, I'm going to see if I can find her, actually. I'm sorry if, if you are one of the people that's on this uh, webinar. Um, this lady here, uh, Candy Creations, started following me the other day. Up until two, she, when she'd done about two or three tweets, she did have 20, 27,000 followers. It's now gone down to 19,000 followers. Um, that, to me, is, is A, she'd only done two, two tweets at the time, but also I was very suspicious about where the followers had come from. So I had a quick look. Um, some of them will probably be ones that are appropriate now. Um, but if you go right back down, and I don't know how long this will take to do, um, you will find that there was lots and lots of eggs, um, and there was lots of people from uh, South America, not that there's anything wrong with South Americans, from America um, and everywhere else that were not, they didn't seem to be appropriate to her business. Uh, this lady makes... Um, and she's based in Cheshire, so I'm guessing that her, her business comes from Cheshire in the northwest. Um, you can't see here because I'm, I'm literally going to have to go all the way down um, to see all the eggs and the Brazilians. Um, but that's an example of, of somebody I, I'm guessing has either bought followers or I don't know what, but it just sounded, just seemed very odd that someone who had only tweeted twice had 27,000 followers. Um, so it's all about quality rather than quantity. And again, like I said, you have to follow people in order to get followers, unless you are, of course, someone like Justin Bieber or Lady Gaga, or you have um, sponsored um, tweets. So you've got, uh, I'll give you an example of a, a sponsored uh, tweet, actually. Be inspired are doing um, sponsored um tweets at the moment. As you can see here, um, you can see it's got a little yellow um, 
if we just put this in hold on a sec you see this this one here for example um i'm just trying to see i keep getting coming up with um, their tweets i think they've had a really aggressive um mass marketing campaign which is is good because you can see that they, they are talking to people so they're not just going on there and promoting but they've done that to build the audience up um, so they've now got 21,643 followers, um, and that's probably because um, they've had sponsored, um, it's not probably, I know it is. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Um, that's just that they, they've, in, in a bit like um, the whole thing with Facebook I was talking about, when you can um, do sponsored um, adverts on Facebook, you can actually do that on Twitter. Um, it costs lots and lots and lots of money. But that's the way of building up an audience. I wouldn't actually recommend that. I always think Twitter, if you do it organically, um, you can build an account up quite quickly, um, but with a good quality audience. Um, okay, let's just go back to um, Smarter. Um, a couple of top tips on here um, from um, various different people. Um, Phil Jones, who is the UK director of Brother, um, I use pictures and links a lot. As long as they're interesting and used in a blend of other content, people will click through and retweet you more. As a result, you'll get more followers and reputation grows. If you ever think about um, people that, because obviously Twitter is a virtual thing, isn't it, until you meet people and see the whites of their eyes. Um, I do meet quite a lot of people from Twitter. Um, you know, obviously I'm based in Manchester, so it's generally people that are based up here, but occasionally I'll meet people in London. Um, but what you have to think about is it's essentially virtual. So if you have a business, whether it's a shop or it's just an online business, um, or you're a freelancer or um, you're like me and Katan who work remotely and we go, then go to client site, think about making that business come to life through Twitter. So. Think about, um, like Phil says, sharing information um, about, you know, pictures, um, the team. Um, obviously, you want people to go to your website, so so links, but not too much of this. Um, think about um, videos, for example. If we go to mine, I don't know whether mine's a good example. I do like to to um, have pictures. Um, these are appropriate to me. Probably not appropriate to you. Um, this is. Um, a couple of my career career chums on um, Twitter, but we also have a cat club. As you can see there, that's a picture of a cat that doesn't really like catching mice. Um, this is these handbag things are apparently they have wine in them. <laughs> Again, this is a personal. These are personal pictures, but it's sort of giving people an idea of my life. So here I've done a tweet to um, a pal that I've got on. Um, Twitter, who is uh, the poster boy for Thompson Morgan Seeds. So I've sent him a picture of um, my plants. I can't remember what the name of it is, but it's very pretty. It comes out for two weeks. This is a really disgusting picture. Uh, I just recently returned from Florida, and uh, my sister-in-law is a personal trainer, and she loves Taco Bell. So I sent her that picture because I came across it, and it's not very pleasant. I'm hoping they'll put her off Taco Bell. Um, again, this is just... This is just sort of a picture of, of, of me um, and, and my life, really. Um, but if you think of it in a business way, so if we go to, um, like, let's just pick on Unlimited again. Um, okay, so this is Unlimited's media gallery. Um, okay, so they've got a video on there. Let's move that so we can get rid of that. There's a cake there. That looks yummy. Um, this is Google, Google Campus uh, event that they had. If, especially if you're doing an event, I think it's really, really good to, to show, show people what's going on because some people will would have wanted to go, but they might not have been able to go, so they can sort of take part in the event. And the great thing here, here is is um, the, these people have used um, two different hashtags. They've used one for so sense. They've also used Google Campus. Um, we did um, an event, we hosted an event um, last year called Youth Enterprise Live, and the event's uh, hashtag was YEL2012, um, and we used that to create a buzz about the event, literally probably three, four weeks before the event started, 
um, to get people um, to sign up to come along. It was a free event, um, and we created a buzz with pictures and videos, uh, and in particular the, 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 the hashtag for this event, just literally by Twitter, and we had 15,000 people over two days. So it obviously worked. Oh, they're showing off with those cakes again, unlimited cakes, very nice, and they've got blooms. Uh, unlimited team have been doing some baking there, so that's looking pretty good. So this is really giving you an idea of what goes on at Unlimited. They obviously make a lot of bread and they eat a lot of cakes. I'm joking, Julie. Um, here uh, we've got here, let's have a look. This is uh, some awards. Again, that's nice to have. Uh, Shine Conference, the Unconference of Social Entrepreneurs. Um, I think we've come to an end of their, their so you, do you get what I'm talking about when it says about coming to life? Um, I'll give you another example. Uh, Smarter HQ, who I thoroughly recommend you follow because they're just fantastic. Um, here, this is, um, isn't that the girl from, I think she's a girl from Maiden Chelsea, isn't it? Anyway, Smarter have just launched something called the Smart Card, Smarter Card. So uh, they launched it at the business show last week. And um, they had a hashtag for the Smarter Card. Um, this is, is here, obviously saying, um, hope you enjoy your Smarter Card. Redeem it at smartercard.com. And there's obviously a picture. Um, this was uh, one of the Smarter 100 business events that they do with O2 Business. So again, that's sort of giving people an example of how many people turned up because you know they want people to think about, okay, there's loads of people at this event. Maybe they want to come to the next event because it looks absolutely fantastic. Uh, it's just some face, so we're going to come past that. Uh, again, this is another, this is that, I think it's the same one, which is a, the Full House at Smarter O2 business event. Um, it's attached there, the um, person that's speaking. Again, if you're going to include somebody uh, in a tweet, you have to and must include the at. Uh, make sure it's the, the, the correct one as well. Make sure that it's not um, the wrong one, because obviously they won't get tagged in it. Um, again, there's Shah Wasamund and uh, one of the team from, well, that's actually a guy that won the Smart 100 last year. He beat us. Um, here, again, this is just about English teas. They're packaging, obviously sending it off to somebody. That's their gorgeous lunch. I'm very jealous. Um, this is them retweeting a video. Um, nice adding today's Metro. Goodbye, boring commute. Hello, smarter commute. That's, a, that's cool. So they're very, very visual. Um, we're going back here now to Christmas tree. Um, I think it's really good to build, bring your business to life through um, pictures and through videos because um, that'll gain an insight into what, in, into your world, so to speak. Um, and do you know what? I just realised it's twelve forty-five. We've been gassing for so long. Uh, we haven't even talked about what's a tweet. Okay, what to tweet? I've been harping on about who you should be following, okay? Once you've got your audience and you've got your, your news feed, okay? So I'm on, I'm on my news feed here. You don't even worry, you don't even need to worry about what to tweet because you're joining in conversations. So you're still doing the thing about sharing information, etc., and becoming a guru of what you do. But you're literally spending your time, and this is obviously a small, you know, thinking about what time, that's a big question actually, how much time do you have to dedicate to this? If you just have five minutes in the morning, five minutes at lunchtime, five minutes in the afternoon, just use those five minutes effectively. If it works for you, set up a list. If it doesn't, you're just literally scooting through and just having a quick look and see what people are talking about. Um, Phil Jones here, okay, so I'm going to send him a quick tweet. Um, are your ear, ears burning? Uh, let's put this control panel up there because I can't see the thing. Are oh, your ears burning? Uh, oh, make sure you spell things properly, by the way. Burning film. Uh, talking about you in a webinar. Okay. We can all see, come back later and see if he comes back to us. Um, so just things like that. And if you look at my timeline, uh, compared to some other people that probably don't engage as much. Most of my stuff is me talking to people. So obviously got the James Khan thing there. I've got a retweet there for Unlimited. I spotted a story this morning. I've got a friend called Alex Winters um, who is one of the presenters on CBBS, 
and notice the story this morning which actually Sandy Lindsay had tweeted from Prolific North saying that CBBs were going to China. So I just sent him a tweet saying you're going to China. So uh, another one here, um, Trafford Housing Trust have got um, their Twitter is Talk Trafford. I noticed something on the Guardian this morning when I was checking the papers about um, a panel that they were doing, a panel discussion they were doing on the 17th of June about using Facebook if you're a housing association. So I'm I'm actively always thinking about other people as well. Another quick gem, and I think, I think Julie, we're going to have to do another one of these because I haven't said half the things that I was going to say because I've been gassing for so long. But let me just show you this. This is a little gem. Um, do a search on this every day. Hashtag at the top, journal request. If you, if you can't afford PR, this is a really good way of thinking about um, how to get PR. So if we can just go here. Um, some of them do have, some, most of them are legitimate ones, but some of them there are some pseudonyms on here who are actually quite funny. But basically, a journal request is freelance journalists, it's uh, radio, newspapers, uh, magazines, TV, actively looking for people. So there's one here, for example, and then again, this is whether it's appropriate to you personally or whether it's appropriate to your business. Uh, Nikki Osman. Um, Let's have a quick look. See, she's a feature editor, writer for Women's Magazine. So you could actually put her into um, a list for media if you had a business that was relating to women. Uh, calling into band lovers, loving, uh, looking to speak to women of 30s, uh, 40s about a why Instagram is great for sharing holiday snaps. Oh, I could, I could come back to that, but I'm 41, so I don't think I'm too old. Um, Let's have a look here. Are you a recent graduate or about to graduate thinking of doing something different than traditional postgrad uh, employment? Let's just see a quick look and see who Sarah is. Um, I'm guessing that she's probably a blogger and she's, she's just PR as well, so that could be for anything. Um, these ones, you literally have to respond to them very, very quickly. If you don't respond to them within a couple of hours, you've lost it. Um, let's have a look here. Touch up compact products and lasting makeup. You might, have, you might be a, a makeup guru. Uh, let's have a look. Looking for mum who spores the kids rotten is available for a show at food in her home today. Um, this, these aren't, they don't just have personal ones. They do have business ones on here. So there's one up here, for example, looking, for, this just popped up. Looking for brothers and sisters who run businesses together, successful or otherwise, fee paid. Now, I know somebody who that would be su suitable for. So, um, I know a family business uh, called Arigi Bianchi. You should speak to uh, now. What I'm doing here is Arigi Bianchi going to like the fact that I've done this, but also the journalists as well. You should speak to Arigi Bianchi. They are a 160-year-old family business. Okay. But that might have been me that I could have, but I don't have any brothers and sisters that I've, I've run a business with, but you get my drift. They're not always personal ones, they are business ones as well. Um, Julie, we're getting to 12.50 now, should we do some questions and answers? Yes, that would be great. Thank you, Naomi. Um, so much information there. It was really, really useful. I could listen to you all day for so many top <laughs> tips. Um, I know we've not touched on things like Hootsuite and stuff, so maybe we could um, yeah. arrange to do another one. I think we do a follow-up session. Yeah, I think that would be really useful. I'm just going to um, allow people a few minutes if they've got any questions at all, because we've got Naomi for another 10 minutes. Any questions at all, anything that you might want demonstrating or anything that you want verifying or checking, if you want to type your questions in um, into the box um, and then we can we can look at answering those now. Um, we have recorded um, this webinar so obviously we can share that with people and then Naomi said you'd be able to send over that smarter guide so I can uh, yeah. share that with everybody um, as well. I know somebody had to leave um, early and they said, um, so sorry to have had to leave, but very impressed with the first webinar that ever joined and the fact that it was your first webinar, Naomi, and said thank you. So uh, yeah. that's a, <laughs> oh, that's some good, good feedback already. Um, so we'll just see if, uh, if anybody else is going to type in any um, questions. 
Oh, brilliant. Okay, so everybody that's on today's webinar, I've got your email addresses, so we'll be able to um, forward uh, this Smarter Guide to you um, later on today. I'll send you the link. I'll, send you, um, I'll send you the doc as well, actually, so they don't have to just download it. I'll send it already downloaded. Okay. I'll tell you what, I can, I can just keep talking if you want me to. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, there's no questions typing in yet, so if you if you work okay for another five, ten minutes and you want to share any of the pearls of wisdom with us, then um, please do so, and then we'll probably draw it to an end uh, at one. Uh, if there are any questions, I'll okay, jump in and let you, you know. No, nope, you carry on as you do. I'm just going to mute myself so you don't get all the background noise here, but um, please carry on. Okay. okay. All right, so biggest thing I can't stress enough is this is all about engagement okay so yes I have talked about you sharing information um, and that kind of thing but please please have us oh look Phil Jones has responded to us um, here let's just send him a quick tweet back so get upset hold on uh, great stuff why I'm doing uh, just, uh, oh, hold on a sec sorry Okay, so let's just send that to him. Okay. Ending, Naomi. Oh, I'm just going to jump uh, in yeah, with I'm one. Stress enough. It's all about it being gay. Yeah, I'm just going to jump in with one question that's come through um, before you go on to engagement. Sure. How, how do you create hashtags on Twitter before an event to kind of drum up interest and, uh, and, and to get people retweeting them and then ultimately to attend the event? Okay, do you know what? It's very simple, but think about something that's going to be really a simple hashtag rather than a big long thing. So what's your, what's your uh, I'll give you an example actually, I've got one up here. Um, Actually, let's have a look. Let me just put in this is our old tweet from last year. Okay, so this was a hashtag that we used for um, Youth Enterprise Live last year. And it's literally thinking of something. So Youth Enterprise Live, Y-E-L 2012. It stands out. It's simple because you want a hashtag that's going to be simple. And you basically, you create your own hashtag. So you just start, uh, if you've got an event, for example, um, that you're, that's four, five weeks away, and I think you do sometimes need to do it that far in advance. As soon as, pretty much as soon as you start selling tickets or you start, um, you know, if it's a free event um, or even a webinar, that kind of thing, um, start using a hashtag straight away. So you get in the habit of using it. Every time you're tweeting about that particular, hash, that, that particular event, you use the hashtag, you encourage people to use that hashtag. So for example, if somebody sends you a question about the event, you respond to them and include the hashtag. Um, if, if for example, um, you know, you have an Eventbrite page, use, put, put the hashtag, you know, in the information about the event, make sure you put the hashtag. That's another thing as well, you know, about building your audience. Um, make sure that everybody knows that you are on Twitter. So. It's on your email uh, signature. It's on your website. It's it's on um, if if it's on your business cards. Think about making sure everybody knows. And if you use that sort of same analogy with the hashtag, it will work. So it's all about creating a buzz. And then obviously with the hashtag, you can then use things like this. Um, depending on whether you have um, the um, a projector, that kind of thing, but there's something called Tweet Volley, so you can create, at your particular event, if you have a great white wall, you can set up a, um, a Tweet Volley, which is really, really simple to do, I'm just having a look at the website now, you literally just put in your hashtag, and um, what it does, you, you can then project it onto a wall, you would need a projector, uh, but you can just project it onto the wall, so people at your event can see all the tweets that everybody's talking about. Another thing about creating a hashtag is, um, like I said, um, if, you, if there's going to be some people that can't be at the event, it, it helps them um, join into the conversation. So there were people that, that couldn't come to Youth Enterprise Live, but that didn't mean that they couldn't find out what was going on at the event. So we, we use the hashtag um, 
three, four weeks before the event, at the event, and then after the event. And you can even do reports on this. There's, there's something called um, Tweet Reach. Um, you can do a report on, and it can basically tell you how, how far your tweets have traveled. Uh, we did a report um, on the hashtag YEL2012 uh, over three days of the event. So it was the day before the event and then two days of the event, and it reached about 12, uh, not 12 million, 2 million, essentially 2 million people. So hashtags for events are fantastic, but don't have a long one, have a simple one. Cool. I've got one other question. I'm just uh, conscious of time, but how easy is it, is it to put a live yeah. feed on a website? Really simple. If you go, it's just, you just get, um, you know, from Twitter, you can just go on and get, um, where's the help thing? Now, I'm not a webby person, I'll be honest with you. Um, you can just get in here. Uh, um, let's have a look. Here, look. If you just go, so I, all I did on um, this Twitter help bit is just put in um, widget on a website, and I just found here how to embed a timeline. So it tells you exactly how to do it. Yeah. Great. You can go into the settings and select the widget you want, and that's how you do it. Fantastic. One other question. Um, I want to sell my services to local parents. How do I build up my followers? Okay. Um, can you just ask that person where they're based? Yeah, if you could, okay. uh, Cheshire. I don't know whether you can tell me that. Yeah, they're in Cheshire. Okay, brilliant. Okay, so talking about Cheshire, that's my patch. So let's have a go to look at this. So it's parents, yeah? Have a look at people like uh, mums in the know who are in, I'm just trying to open it now. So again, th looking at who other people are following as well is, is a really great way of doing it. So, uh, Mums in the Know is a national organization, um, and they have, in each, each town can have a Mums in the Know. Obviously, it's dependent on people buying the franchise, but for example, I'm looking at Mums in the Know Hale here. So obviously, you'd be following them. You'd also be follow, looking at who they're following and who's following them, because more than likely, they're going to be um, other family-related businesses, parents, um, or um, and mums, um, that are going to have an interest in stuff that's in that area. So if you have a think about um, like mums in the know, there's several different ones. There's loads of different ones. Um, if you just put in a search and just put mums Cheshire in and just see, see what pops up. So you've got, um, let's have a look, you've got people here. So you've got Families Cheshire, which is a magazine. Go through who they're following, who's following them. Um, Cheshire Mums magazine. If you just sort of go with that rule of thumb, it's very very easy. And then also think about if your business your business um, is selling services in Cheshire, maybe think about when you're doing your sales type tweets, including hashtag Cheshire.